So today we're going to delve into the world of kendo and present a special feature on the unique style of two-sworded kendo. Let's welcome back martial arts expert and teacher Alexander Bennett from New Zealand. So you've been studying kendo for over 26 years and you are a seventh dan Kyoshi master. Mm, well, master, I don't like that word. I've got a long way to go. Yet. All right, so yeah. today's show is all about kendo. So let's begin by going over the rules for kendo bouts. And to help us explain, let's welcome back martial arts researcher, Baptiste Tavernier. Thank you for joining us. So Alex, let's go over the basic rules. Right, well, the rules for kendo, it's a little bit complicated. I if bet. you've never seen it before, you wonder what's going on. It's not just a matter of hitting any part of the body randomly. There are four targets. Four targets. Okay, and if I can borrow Baptiste. Okay. Uh, first of all, there is the mask. Mask. Okay, this is called men in Japanese, so that's one target. Uh, the next uh, target is the throat. This is a thrust to the throat. It's called tsuki. Tsuki. Okay, and then we have uh, the gauntlets. Uh, these are called kote. Okay, and uh, so a strike to the kote would count as a point. And also the trunk. Okay, this is called do. Do. So you've got these four targets. One, two, three, four. Mmm. Okay, but just hitting the targets is not enough. You've got to meet no? certain criteria. Yeah. So, first of all, you have to strike with uh, um, proper posture, okay, full of uh, vigor, mm. okay, so it's not weak, okay, you've got to, <laughs> you've got to go straight in there, okay, you've got to strike the target with the correct part of the Shinai. Shinai is the bamboo sword. Ooh. Okay, so you can't strike the air and you can't strike the two. It's got to be right here. You've got to be accurate. You've got to be very accurate. And then, after you make the strike with your body and your mind and your sword all in one, mm. you've got to continue through and show continued alertness and uh, physical and psychological alertness. And this is called Zanshi. All right. And the, the referees will look at that and they'll go, mm. Okay, from start to finish, that was good, so we'll give it a point. Mm, there's so much. So tell me about a successful attack. Well, um, a successful attack, I think it's, it's probably easier to show you, but there, it's sort of like um, there's stages, but it's all connected together. All right. You start off by assailing your opponents, then you destabilize them psychologically or physically, uh -huh. then you uh, execute the technique. Uh, with total commitment, choosing the right technique, of course. <laughs> and then finally, after you've done all that, you just go through naturally and demonstrate zanshin, or the lingering mind. Right. So it's probably easy to show you, right? Please, please. Okay, so I'll ask uh, Batiste to help me again. So we start off uh, in the on guard position. Um, where we're facing each other. We're not just standing around watching, we're looking to try and create some kind of opening. So this is where we assail each other. Okay. Um, and we're sort of trying to take each other's centre. And then when I see an opportunity, I might go in and I destabilise my opponent. Okay, I put pressure on him, sometimes shouting at him, yeah! and he freezes. Mm. And then we see that there are some openings that have uh, appeared. Okay. But I can't just hit anything. Obviously, I can't hit door because that's covered. So I've got to choose the right technique. Okay, in this case, I've probably got two options. I've got the throat or I've got the mask. Okay, so from here, I'll take the mask. I'll execute the technique instantaneously with total commitment of body and mind. Bam! Okay, and after the technique, uh, striking it, I'd follow through for Zanshin. So it okay. goes something like this. Yeah! And then back to the start again. Okay, thank you. All right. 
So now we know how an Ippon is scored. Let's take a look at some action from the recent All-Star Kendo, All-Japan Kendo Championships. This year's All Japan Kendo Championships is even higher profile than usual. The anticipation is building over who will make Japan's team for the World Championships. A leading candidate for the national title is last year's winner, Ryoichi Uchimura. He's a three-time champion and one of Japan's foremost kendo practitioners. But in his third round match, Uchimura takes an early exit after being struck on the wrist. His loss clearly shows the difficulty of Kendo, demonstrating how a single lapse in concentration can mean it's all over. With one of the favorites losing so early on, it was a chance for some younger stars to step into the limelight. One hopeful is 21-year-old student Yuya Takenouchi. He excels in striking his opponent right at the time they are trying to attack. In the semi-final, he shows his sharpness. <laughs> Takenouchi blocks an attack to his mask and lands a blow to the torso. Throughout the tournament, he stood out for his incredible alertness. Dentano Kunitomo is another promising young swordsman. Kunitomo has a solid defense. He likes to wait for his opponent to show a lapse in concentration before launching a sudden attack. As bouts get into their latter stages, he becomes extremely hard to beat. He proves so by notching up four of his five victories in extra time. Show on. In the final, the aggressive Takenouchi faces the defensive Kunitomo. Both men are battling it out for their first ever national title. Against expectations, it's Kunitomo who makes the first attack. He changes from his usual strategy and takes the initiative. But Takenouchi is ready and calmly wards him off. As each man tries to outdo the other, it's Takenouchi who is first to find a gap in his opponent's armor. Takenouchi claims the first Ippon with a fluid combination attack. Kunitomo knows he needs to step forward and start attacking to get back in the match. As Kunitomo goes on the offensive, Takenouchi reacts and strikes his mask using one of his trademark techniques. It's the first time in 43 years that a university student has won the All Japan Championships, making Yuya Takenouchi a new hope for Japanese kendo. It hasn't quite sunk in yet, but I'm absolutely delighted. I'm really happy because I'm best at striking the mask and thought I could go far in the tournament if I made that my main strategy. I want to do well for Japan at the World Championships. So Alex, can you tell me a little bit more about the techniques the champion used for an, an Ippon? 
Okay, so the first technique that he scored in the match was known as Ojiwaza, Ojiwaza. which means counter attack or counter technique. And what he did is he lured his opponent into striking his men, his okay. mask, and he countered that and returned it to the body. Really fast. <laughs> really fast. Right. It's a, it's a very high level technique. So tell me more about this Ojiwaza. Well, Ojiwaza is it's, it's basically what it is. It's not just a reaction when your opponent attacks. You're making your opponent come in. You're sort of controlling them so that mm. they feel uh, confident that they can make an attack, but you're just, well, you've set the trap for them, right? And then you just say, thank you, and you return the favor. <laughs> so you feel it in the air. Yes, that's all right. right. So it's, it's a mind game as okay. much as a physical game. So let's actually see the video. Here it is. Yep, so here he is. Uh, uh, okay, he lures White, his opponent, in, and he blocks it and returns in one movement. Okay, so it's, it's seamless. <laughs> that was so fast. Yeah, as he scores that point, and so that's good enough uh, for the referees to put their flags up, and mm. he, he gets a, a beautiful uh, technique called Man Kai Shi Do. Okay, so Man Kai Shi means return, uh -huh. Do, to the, to the body. Okay, so you're actually going to show us yeah, some sure. techniques. Yeah, sure. Okay, so man kaishi door. I'll ask uh, Batiste to help me. Onegai shimas. <clears throat> so from this position, we're we're assailing each other, putting pressure on each other, and then I'll make Batiste think that he can strike my man. Okay, so he yeah. comes forward and commits himself to the technique. I block it and return it like that. Okay, so man kaishi door. So if we do it in real time, okay. yay! And that would be a point. All right. Okay. So this this is one of the techniques in the Ojiwaza set or the counter technique set. Other techniques, for example, uh, would be sudiage. Okay. Waza. Sudiage is deflection. So again. I'm facing my opponent and I sort of urge him to come in and strike my man. Okay, and so when he does that, he feels confident to strike my man. I deflect it and strike his man. Okay, or I could do it on the other side. He's coming in to strike me. He deflect. Bam. Mm. Okay, or uh, another variation of that. If my opponent comes and tries to strike my kote, my wrist, okay, I can deflect that and strike his man. I don't need much power, it's very subtle. That's all, Ooh. and I've deflected it, he can't touch it. So I follow up from there. Yeah! Yeah! Okay. And so there are some examples of ojiwaza, okay. or counter techniques. But it went quickly. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you don't have time to think. And that's why you have to be taking the initiative. Mm. Come on, come on, come on, go thank you, sort oh. of thing. That's, that's the mindset behind it. That is very interesting. So let's learn a little bit more about the kendo roots. And so kendo has a history of nearly a thousand years. And I'm sure, Alex, you know this gentleman right here. Indeed. Miyamoto Musashi. Miyamoto Musashi. So tell me about Well, he, he's... Uh, Probably, I mean, o over the many centuries that kendo has been developed or developing, there are a number of uh, very famous warriors or swordsmen that have had a profound effect uh, on the way that, uh, you know, it has uh, evolved uh, technically and philosophically and spiritually. And Miyamoto Musashi is, is one of these uh, famous warriors um, who uh, really, what he did, what he wrote, um, still is very important uh, to people practicing kendo to this day. Uh, for example, he wrote a book in 1645, just before he died. The Five Rings? Yep, it's called The Five Rings. In Japanese, it's called Gorin no Sho. Mm -hmm. And it, it, Five Rings means it's made up of five chapters. And he goes, basically explains his uh, whole life philosophy and how 
uh, he approached his swordsmanship. And, uh, you know, even today, even though it was written centuries ago, mm -hmm. the more you read it, the more you understand and the more you can apply the principles uh, that he's written about through life and death experience uh, to the, the modern uh, art or sport of kendo. So it's talking about uh, uh, the way, where you should be looking when you're facing your opponent mm -hmm. and uh, the rhythm and the timing and strategy and all sorts of things. It's a very profound book. So it must have influenced you a lot. <laughs> uh, it does, and the more I do kendo, the more I understand it and the mm. more important it becomes. So I he heard really you read it a... many, many times. Uh, yes, you, you sort of carry it around all the time, right? All right. So, so Miyamoto Musashi continues to influence kendo today. So let's find out more about this legendary swordsman. Miyamoto Musashi is a Japanese legend. The swordsman is said to have fought and won more than 60 duels. Even today, he frequently features in comics, novels, and movies as a superhero wielding two swords, one short and one long. Musashi made a major contribution to the development of swordsmanship in Japan. His teachings still have a profound influence on modern martial arts. Miyamoto Musashi lived roughly 400 years ago. At that time, battles for control of Japan were dying down, and an era of peace was about to begin. While many warriors served feudal lords in the hope of achieving honor and stability, Musashi set off to travel and duel, honing his skills to become the best warrior in the land. Musashi won duels against masters of various disciplines, including spear fighting and sickle and chain combat. He gained experience and polished his techniques to become an even more formidable opponent. As he remained undefeated, Musashi's name and legend spread throughout Japan. Eventually, Musashi established the style of Niten Ichiryu, or fighting with two swords. In his later years, Musashi wrote Godin no Sho, the Book of Five Rings, in order to pass his knowledge and experience down to future generations. He wrote the book over 18 months after retreating to a cave. One passage reads as follows. When you are fighting for your life, you need to make use of all your tools. If you carry two swords, you mustn't go to your death carrying only one and leaving the other in its sheath. Kendo expert Hirotsugu Sasaki says this statement shows Musashi's innovative ability to move outside existing frames of thinking. Musashi was a very logical thinker. He wondered why, when samurai have two arms and carry two swords, they only ever use one sword at a time. He thought that if you have two hands and two swords, then you could simply take one weapon in each hand and use both. Today, we might describe his approach as making full use of one's ability, environment, and available tools. The Book of Five Rings was translated into English in the 1980s and immediately produced an impact around the world. As a manual for success that can be applied to business and daily life, the Book of Five Rings has been read across the globe. Musashi died seven days after finishing the book at the age of 62. Among his final words was the phrase, Do not regret your deeds. Miyamoto Musashi consistently dedicated himself to getting stronger, and these words are a statement to how he lived his life. 
You know, Alex, I bet many Japanese people don't know that Nito Kendo is an official Kendo style. That's right. It's quite rare, actually. There's not so many people that do it because you have to be uh, university or above to be able to do it. Okay, so, you know, children don't do it. So it's quite rare, but uh, it's still um, it's a very uh, uh, unique. If you look at the shinai or the swords that are used, uh, you can see that one is shorter uh, than the other. And this is called the shoto and or the short sword and this is about well it's up to 62 centimeters in length okay and the daito which is the long sword uh, that's up to 114 uh, centimeters in length so there's a variation in the size and if you compare the daito with the standard shinai for adults who do uh, the one sorted style okay. you can see that uh, it's slightly shorter isn't it the uh, the nito one the daito um, and also the handle is mm. shorter and that is because when you uh, use it you're, you're holding it with one hand okay okay above your head uh, whereas the uh, when you do the one sword style you're holding it with both hands mm. so this the shinai or the bamboo swords are slightly different Okay, so it must be such an advantage to have two swords instead of one. Yes and no. One of the advantages is uh, that not many people have the opportunity to practice against Nito, so it can okay. be quite surprising or okay. perplexing. Whoa, what's going mm. on? Uh, when you get used to it, it becomes a different matter. So uh, with Nito, uh, it has its advantages, but it has its disadvantages, and I guess uh, the fact that it requires a lot of coordination to use two hands at once. Mm. Uh, and also, because you're striking with one hand, uh, the strikes are sometimes uh, judged to be a little bit too weak oh, really? to give the point. You've got to have a little bit of strength in there. So there's, there's some uh, mm. advantages and disadvantages. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the Nito Kendo style of swordsmanship. Nito Kendo is a unique style of fighting with two swords, one long and one short. In 2007, the style featured in the All Japan Kendo Championships for the first time in 38 years. It drew a great deal of attention as it reminded many people of the legendary swordsman Miyamoto Musashi. If fighting with one sword is a deep discipline, then fighting with two swords is a broad discipline. During my practice, I've focused on expanding my repertoire. We visited the Niten Ichiryu Musashikai organization to find out more about this fascinating martial art. Musashikai focuses on combining Miyamoto Musashi's two-sword approach with standard one-sword kendo. <laughs> Members continually practice kata, or forms using swords made from wood. There are 13 different kata in all. Performing them is the best way to remember the body movements and footwork. Kendo master Futoshi Sato says that all the necessary movements are included in the kata. When you try to fight an opponent with just one sword, you cannot block and attack at the same time. There is a technique called suriyage, when the opponent tries to attack your wrist and you quickly block and strike back. But precisely speaking, these are two separate movements. You block and then strike, but when you use two swords, the advantage is that you can fend off an attack and strike at exactly the same instant. Being able to defend and strike at exactly the same time is the biggest advantage of Nito Kendo. There are also other essential aspects to the two-sword approach. It's important to see how much you can distract your opponent by keeping their awareness on the short sword. The short sword is principally used for defense, but under the rules of Nito Kendo, it can also be used to land an Ippon. If the opponent is made wary of the short sword, then the long sword can be used for more effective attacks. 
how the short sword is used is a major characteristic of the two sword style and has a big influence on how each individual fights. Practitioners say that training to develop a deeper understanding of two sword fighting has a beneficial impact on standard kendo. With a sword in each hand, your balance isn't right. Learning how to use both swords with good balance has benefits for single sword kendo. Since I can attack or defend, I find that I am more relaxed and able to watch my opponent. I feel mentally stronger and more able to exercise patience in my attacks. Finally, we asked Kendo master Futoshi Sato to show us how the two swords can be used in combination for what is known as Ojiwaza. With this Ojiwaza, you block an attack to the torso and strike the mask at the same time. The Ojiwaza combination techniques are all performed in one swift movement. Here, a block to the mask is followed by a torso strike. The attack to the mask is blocked with the short sword, while the longer sword is used to strike the torso. As both swords can be used in numerous different combinations, two-sword Nito Kendo offers a wide range of possibilities. Kendo master Hirotsugu Sasaki says its free-flowing nature is one of its biggest attractions. If you have a sword in both hands, you can move as if you had a sword in neither hand. This gives you more freedom. You have to choose in an instant which sword to use. This variation is one reason why people are drawn to Nito Kendo. Yeah, so th those guys are pretty good actually. They're obviously putting a lot of time and effort into training Nito. But I mean, uh, one sword style called okay. Ito, that's pretty, that's orthodox. Okay. And so Nito is a bit of a variation. It requires completely retraining your body, even mm. though the principles are generally the same. But uh, I've actually fought against Nito opponent before. You have? Yeah, it's quite, first oh, time it's it? like, whoa, what am I supposed to do? Because you think you've got an opening, you go in there and suddenly that short sword gets in the way and blocks it. Mm. And it's like completely out of the blue. So you You've got to really rethink your strategy mm. and uh, how you um, assail your opponent. So. so the short sword tricks you and confuses you. Right? Uh, it gets in the way, mm. yeah, and it shouldn't get in the way, but oh. it does. You know, so it's psychological as well. All right. So despite its history, there is a footage of the style in use, and this competition took place in front of the emperor in 1940. A two-sworded fighter was the runner-up. That's right, this was, uh, well, they call it the Tendan Jiai, so in front of the emperor. It's very prestigious. And this particular uh, competitor, he actually was the runner-up two times in a row. So he did a lot for making uh, Nito well-known throughout the country at that time. And the good news is the next Kendo World Championships held every three years will be in Japan. That's right, in Tokyo next year, mm. uh, the uh, Nippon Budokan. Uh, more countries will be participating next year than ever before, 57. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure that uh, there will be some Nito competitors uh, from some of the foreign countries as well. So it should be very exciting. Then you're going to go. I yep, bet. I'm <laughs> going to be the coach for the New Zealand team. Yeah. So we're going for the best eight in the world like last time. All right. So thank you very much for joining us, thank Alex, you. today. Thank you, everybody, for watching Sports Japan. And we'll see you next time.